what's going on everybody hope everybody's having a good day we're gonna do a few things to this thing today oh some of you guys might call it running the rack uh, adjusting the overhead basically what we're doing we're adjusting the valves so what we're gonna show you guys and I've been kind of putting this off because once I get that valve cover off I don't know what I'm gonna find but I figured eh, there's no better time than now to do it so I probably should get get it done so I want to show you guys how to do that. Let's get started. So is this, as far as this project is concerned, it's not very difficult. It is time consuming and there's a few things you're going to need to know. But uh, before I start a time lapse here, because you guys don't need to see, see me take the valve cover off and everything, you're going to take the top half of the valve cover off and then I might come back and show you guys the CCV filter. I have no idea if this one's been deleted or not, or gutted, I guess I should say. So, I don't know what I'm gonna find there. And then we're gonna take the lower half of the valve cover off. And I, I, uh, I'm not quite sure, but I will kinda have to assess if I need to take the valve cover gasket off, which has the uh, injector wires, the harness for the injectors, and the actual uh, rocker box or a uh, valve cover spacer. Um, if you guys don't know what the rocker box is, that's basically what it is. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna set you guys up on a time lapse. We're gonna get this off. Um, you know, pretty simple stuff. Eight millimeter bolts, hold the top on around the side of this. And then the valve cover bolts are underneath this cover. Um, Pretty simple stuff, but I'm gonna set you guys down. We'll time lapse it and come back. We have the valve cover off. We'll get to that in a minute, but I want to give you guys a quick little disclaimer. First, like I said before, I've never been in the valve cover, so I don't know. I didn't know what I was going to find, but I want to show you guys. It's not a CCV filter delete. You can't just take the filter out and call it good. That is why I have oil everywhere, and it's actually kind of a relief because. I thought it had some more serious of a leak, but no, they just took the CCV filter out completely. You cannot do that because this seal that runs around here and the CCV filter itself are part, they seal the top half of the valve cover. Without that CCV filter body, you have no seal, so you, this is what you get, oil all over everything. So. What I'm going to have to do is get a CCV filter, which I probably will try to find a cheap one because I'm going to show you guys how to gut them, um, not delete them, gut them. So short of that, let's come over here. Oh, and I didn't show you guys this thing. This is one handy tool, uh, a topside creeper, right? I've been stashing it at work because I use it there most of the time. But I decided to bring it home for this project. And I can tell you, I'm really glad I did. So, what we're up against now, this is, this spacer right here, this next piece, is called a rocker box. Um, 
and adjust the valves on this thing. I don't, oof, this feel loose. I don't have to take that out, uh, which is nice. What I am gonna do, I will take a, a, a feeler gauge and I'll bend it a little bit. These are all super loose, so that's good. We're gonna gain a day. We're actually gonna gain something today. So, uh, getting off, getting off uh, task here, but I'm not gonna mess with the valve cover gasket because I do not wanna take a chance of messing up any of these connections to the injectors. So, the next thing we have to do is get our engine to top dead center. Top dead center on one and, oh, I don't remember the order, but Basically, I need to get down to the crank, spin the motor over. Um, I'll show you, well, let's let's just do it. So trying to find a good way to turn the motor over, there's tons of different ways you can do it. The best way is to actually get the Cummins tool, the barring tool. It goes in the back of the uh, engine and you just spin the motor over. Another option I've seen people do is they come down here with a 15 millimeter wrench or a socket and I grab one of the four bolts that holds your balancer on um, and spin it over that way and I'm not doing it that way today because of two reasons one I don't have the right socket I don't have a shallow 15 and two I've always been a little weary about putting pressure on those bolts like that to turn the motor over um, so what I'm gonna have to do today is just uh, bump it with a starter kind of an old-school method you know so what I did was right here you can barely see it right now you can barely see it but my top dead center mark is right here and uh, so I'm gonna take a paint pen and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna mark my top dead center line so now when I bump it over when it gets to the top, you need to get to the top, I will see that mark. I used a pry bar on the fan clutch and my my belt had enough grab that I could slowly roll it over. So that's where I got it. Um, I don't know if you guys can see down there, but that blue paint mark we put on the, the balancer is straight up and down. So we're top dead center on the compression stroke of number one. So, we should be able to do one, and this is intake, one, okay, two, and four, yeah, and exhaust, we should do one, three, and five. So those are all loose. So for the next step, we need a 14 millimeter wrench and a five millimeter Allen. 
And what that's gonna allow us to do is come in here and adjust our lash. So Allen goes in there, 14 millimeters for your jam nut. So we still need to get our feeler gauges. Now, when it comes to the feeler gauges and the actual adjustment of the valves, that is a very, what I found to be a very controversial thing with these six, seven trucks. So the factory recommendation for a six, seven Cummins is 10 thousandths on the intake and 26 thousandths on the exhaust. Well, a dinosaur of a mechanical or any 5.9 is uh, 10 thousandths on the intake, 20 thousandths on the exhaust. It's been told many, many times that on a 6.7 Cummins that is deleted, that you don't have emissions on, you can run 10 thousandths on the intake and 20 thousandths on the exhaust like you would a 5.9. Um, so that's what I'm going to set mine to is 10 and 20, not 10 and 26. Because, because this truck doesn't regen anymore. Um, it doesn't see the high exhaust temps as it used to. And it's my understanding that the reason they went to 10 and 26 was because of the regen process. Now correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but it was the regen process and the excessive EGTs for long periods of time that they wanted the exhaust valves a little looser. Um, you know to prevent damage so long story short I'm gonna go 10 and 20 on this engine um, 10 and 26 is factory I'm not gonna argue that uh, I think I don't know off the top of my head but there is a allowed buffer so technically 10 and 20 is in in line it's acceptable in these um, but that's my story and that's what I'm doing so we're gonna take our ten thousands and we're gonna go between the valve bridge and the rocker it's a little loose so we'll take our 14. I'm going to crack that loose. I'm going to adjust this down till it's just gives us just a bit of resistance. Okay, still wiggles in there, it's just a little bit of resistance. Then we're going to not turn our adjuster, we're going to tighten that down. with it that's pretty good that feels really good so tighten that down move on to the next one next is our 20 thousandths same thing on the exhaust side we're going to stick that between break that loose Bring that down to where it just has a little bit of resistance. Right there. Yep. And snug it down. Yeah, that feels good. Just a little bit. The slightest bit of resistance in there. So that's cylinder number one. I'm gonna finish this rotation by doing one, two, and four on the intake, and one, three, and five on the exhaust. 
Okay, one thing we can do, take our paint pen that we use to mark our crankshaft, or our balancer, sorry. And we're gonna go through here, and we're gonna mark the rockers that we've already done. Which, so far we've done one, and we've done two. So that way we know they're done. So I'm gonna set you guys up on time lapse, and we're gonna do the rest of this, and then rotate the motor over and finish her out. There you guys have it. Valve adjustment, 6, 7 Cummins. Uh, it's not too difficult, like I said before, just a little time consuming. Um, if you took anything from this, learned anything, let me know what you think about the valve adjustment specs. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching these, and uh, we're going to get back in that valve cover. I didn't clean it up because I'm going to have to get myself a CCV filter since that one is gone. And we're going to have to show you guys how to gut those because it's another one of the things you might want to know. So anyway, um, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, please do. I'm trying to grow. I want this thing to grow. And I can't do that without you guys. So um, like the video, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next one.